Hey guys, what's up? It's Audrey Steeman. I don't know about you guys, but I have not been able to find any really good um, process or walkthroughs or tutorials on combining 2D and 3D animation. It's something that I've admired for the longest time, especially with seeing the work from Buck and Gunner Animation and Giant Ant um, and how well of a job they do with combining uh, those two mediums and, and even more. And I want to kind of incorporate more 3D into my work as well, but I am not finding any great examples of uh, workflow and pipeline and stuff like that. So with this little mini series, um, I'm attempting to kind of combine um, a little bit of 3D using Cinema 4D with 2D animation and After Effects. In this first episode, I'm just going to cover going from mood boards to sketching to making an animatic from those sketches. And in the second episode, I'm going to cover designing the animation using either um, Adobe Illustrator or Cinema 4D. Either one can kind of come first. In this first part, I'm going to kind of go through my mood board and sketches and kind of walking through how I would go about doing an animatic. Um, so that I can kind of bring that into After Effects and then all of the animation will be easily kind of transcribed to that animatic. So with my mood board here you can kind of see I have some references of 3D glass and some caustics kind of going on um, and just some other like glass effects too and just kind of experimenting when we get into cinema of how frosty I want the glass to look, how transparent. Um, I kind of really love this noise that's kind of going on with the blending of these colors and want to see if we can kind of do that with those caustics. And then down here is just some reference to glass shapes and hand shapes uh, and trying to kind of see how I want to model the hand and design it in Illustrator. So here I'm sketching out in Procreate and kind of using the symmetry tool at first just to evenly get that glass going and that background element. Um, and then obviously the, the branches and the oranges and, and all that stuff. With this design, I wanted it to be pretty friendly to incorporating 3D elements into it, where for this one it's pretty much just going to be the glass. And I think just having a really nice blend of 2D and 3D together, but kind of using a really nice color palette and hopefully some kind of compositing effects towards the end that like really blend it well together. Um, can make it a really nice piece. But this is kind of the step where I really wanted to keep in mind um, the animation challenges that were going to come with each of these elements that would kind of be moving on their own, even if it was just a little bit. Now one of my mentors in the past has told me that you can have a really cool animation with a lot of effects and all kinds of things going on that's super impressive, but if the design is shit, then the animation is shit. <laughs> It's, it's so true in the animation and motion graphic industry that design really is key. And if you can have a really balanced and beautiful color palette and good elements that kind of work in each other's favor with everything else kind of going on in your composition, then animation should be pretty easy. And especially if, even if it's just subtle, it's still a successful animation. I also made this really quick and rough frame by frame tracing of my hand coming in and picking up a glass and then setting it back down. When you're animating, obviously video reference is always going to be super helpful and especially with hands which are already pretty hard to design and draw, uh, let alone animate in a semi-realistic fashion. I think this will be super helpful. So here are some original style frames I kind of have going on. Um, they're not too stylized in the way that I want the final outcome to be just yet, um, but for Procreate and just kind of seeing composition and color um, and kind of how that hand kind of comes in and comes out, um, I want it to loop like a GIF. So you can kind of see the sequence of events here and that just kind of loops back um, kind of in a ping pong way. So it's pretty simple to see that there's just four basic motions kind of going on here. Um, and obviously it'll be a little more complex when we're actually animating in After Effects, but just for an animatic purpose, I think this is a good start. So next I'm going to throw these into After Effects and we'll create an animatic. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a new composition. I'll just name it Animatic 01 for now. Um, and the file size that I have going is 1080 by 1350. And then I'll set this to 24 frames a second. 
And then I'm not totally sure what the loop time is going to be uh, for the GIF, but I think for right now I'll just make it at maybe like 8 seconds. So I'm going to throw in my animatic references and my hand reference. I'll just drag those four here and then I'll, I'll just kind of cut these up and kind of mess around with the timing of each just to see. I'm just going to sequence these out manually real quick. And then obviously we're going to start on this frame where there's no hand. Then the hand will come in, take the glass, and then it'll go out. So I want the glass to be on a little bit more before that hand comes in, so I'm going to lengthen this first bit. But I, I really want for this first bit of animation for it to really establish the subtle movement of the of the branches and the and the ice kind of moving and the bubbles and, and liquid kind of moving around on its own. Um, and then the, it'll kind of be more of a surprise when the hand comes in to take it away. And I think I think here too, um, we, kind of, we want to create that loop as well. So the hand takes the glass away, takes a drink, and then I think maybe around here, I'll shorten that. I'll kind of reverse it to where I get that this frame before to come back in and to set the glass back down so that it fully loops to the beginning. So there's going to be quite a bit of hand coming in, hand coming out, and then hand coming in and out again. Maybe we need to move these around just a little bit just to account for that. And again, this is going to be much more refined during the actual like animation pass, but for an animatic, it's good to kind of know some general timing reference for sure. If I was a little smarter, I would have probably exported the glass and the hand on their own layers so then I could, I could actually be a little more detailed with this animatic and have them move on their own and not be just four images to work with, so. So learn from me and my mistakes and go a little step further. <laughs> As long as you understand what you're going for and know what you need to do, then that's that's really the best thing you can do. And here I'm also going to see what it's like to add in that um, hand reference that I kind of made for this reason. I'm going to change the, mul the blending mode to multiply just so I can see it a little bit better. I'm going to flip that. So we can kind of see at the beginning of this the hand already kind of comes down. So I'm going to keep note of that position there and try to match that up with when the hand is like fully down, like that. And so we can already see that the timing is kind of off. And I'm not staying totally true to this uh, frame by frame, super rough animation that I have of my hand coming in to pick up a glass. But I think obviously it's much more accurate, so I might try to kind of finesse the timing on these frames just a little bit to match with that. By here, it's totally out of frame. And we might come in when the hand is like fully designed and everything and we're trying to animate it and this might even be too fast, but again, it's just to see. You can always edit that stuff later. So I think this will do it for now for our animatic and I think the next step is to start actually designing this stuff to be able to animate it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was a little helpful. Be sure to keep an eye out for that second episode where I'm going to be covering the 2D design of the animation using Adobe Illustrator. So thanks again for watching and I will see you next time.